Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 66 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. I'm Lola Phoenix. Please send your questions to nonmonogamyhelp at gmail.com and they'll either be read in the podcast or the column anonymously. If you want to read the columns and listen to the podcast, you can go to nonmonogamyhelp.com. Subscribe to our newsletter by going to go.nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash email and follow us on Twitter at nonmonogamyhelp. If you want to support the columns and the podcast, please consider becoming a patron. Even $1 a month helps support the general daily running of the columns and podcasts and just shows me a vote of support that you appreciate what it is that I'm doing and you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash Lola Phoenix if you donate five dollars or more a month your name with your permission will be read at the end of the podcast let's get to this week's discussion question if this is the first episode you're hearing every week before I read the letter I put forth a discussion question that you can use with your friends partners or anyone else to get to know them a little bit more I also answer it myself briefly to give you just a little bit of context this week's discussion question question is, what is a non-monogamous setup that wouldn't work for you? So I'm putting this in here because I think that a lot of people assume that all people who are non-monogamous are inherently compatible, which isn't really true. I think that there are different kinds of setups that work for some people and setups that wouldn't work for others. Um, for me, one thing that I've always kind of noticed is particularly what's called kitchen table polyamory, which is basically described as like where you and all your metamors kind of get along and are around a kitchen table like a family and I find this description and generally its concept quite funny because it just is one of those things that makes me feel like I don't really fit into the community sometimes because the type of kitchen table that I grew up around is not the kitchen table that I would want in my relationships so I don't know. I I think that that setup probably wouldn't work for me. Uh, swinging probably wouldn't work for me. So those are kind of non-monogamous setups that wouldn't really work for me. And I think it's interesting to think about what ones wouldn't work for you. So yeah, to go through the discussion question again, what is a non-monogamous setup that wouldn't work for you? Let's get to this week's letter. I've been seeing a guy for over two and a half years. We started seeing each other after he got out of an eight-year relationship, and it's been semi-casual. Neither of us have made any serious commitment, and we both have been seeing other partners. But since that year mark, we have been exchanging I love yous and confirmed that we were in a relationship. In July, I found out that he had been seeing her for the past year, at least once a week. I spoke with her, and she confirmed that she's been with him and that she knew that I was his primary and that she wanted more from him, possibly a relationship. Since then, he stated that I'm his primary, but he enjoys seeing her sexually and that he needs an open relationship. It isn't that he is seeing someone else sexually, I am open to this, but it's the fact that he's lied and that she wants more time and affection and that I'm the to blame for the lack of that. I feel attacked from both sides and I don't know how to continue with this. I've been scrambling looking for advice since July. I've been following your podcast. I appreciate any advice on this situation. Before I get to this week's answer, I'm going to quickly plug this episode's sponsor, BetterHelp. Quite often in a lot of my columns and podcasts, I encourage people to seek a polyamory-friendly therapist, and for a lot of people, that is just not possible, whether locally or because of any other reason. They just can't find someone who necessarily knows anything about polyamory. BetterHelp allows you to find therapists online that you can send messages to at any time of day. They do also offer some financial aid and do have polyamory-friendly therapists. You can get 10% off of your first month by using the promo code non-monogamy help or going to betterhelp.com forward slash non-monogamy help. Let's get to this week's answer. The first big problem with this situation is the lying. Now, even though you said you weren't official and you only after the first year of being together said that you were in a relationship, I find it a little worrying that he didn't mention this other partner to you at all, and I don't really know how you found out about it, whether you found out 
because you discovered it yourself or he told you doesn't sound like he told you it sounds like you discovered it yourself and then you had this conversation with her where she seems to say she knew that that you were his primary and she wants more and also seems to have told you i assume that she told you this that he wants more time and affection or no she blames you for the time and affection that she's not got from him which isn't great and then he sort of tells you that you're definitely his primary and that he's only interested in her sexually there's a lot there's a lot about this that's a problem it's not up to me to tell you what you define as cheating there's a reason why i personally prefer not to have things in kind of a weird quasi unsure state like i prefer things to be quite clear in terms of like are we in a relationship yes or no and maybe it's that you didn't have that and so he kind of felt like he didn't need to tell you about her but i i would feel cheated in this situation i i i would have a hard time not feeling cheated because it's the lying and it's hiding her and it just feels like she has been hidden from you and she knew about you but you didn't know about her and that's just really odd and I don't see why that's the case and I just feel like he could have easily just mentioned it in passing I do know that like a lot of people when they begin trying out non-monogamy sometimes they accidentally cheat because they don't really know how to tell their partners that they're seeing someone else and they're so used to the idea that they shouldn't do that because if they do that it'll end the relationship that they end up cheating kind of by mistake so maybe that's where he's coming from, but you got to figure out, like, why did he not mention this up until now? I also feel like, had I been able to advise you before you had that conversation with her, I probably wouldn't have advised you to have a conversation with her because this is kind of not really about her. But the fact that you did, you've got, like, this other information, which is that she does want more from him, and she's mad at you because she's blaming you that you know, she hasn't been able to get more time and affection from him. Now, it's kind of, it's okay that she wants that, and I'm not blaming her for that, but I feel a little bit worried about the fact that she is blaming you and has no problem telling you that, and you go and talk to him, and he's like, yeah, you're my primary, and I'm just interested in her sexually. There's some communication breakdowns going on in his relationship with her, because well, it's okay for her to want stuff, and I'm, I'm not saying that's bad. She's not going to get that, and that's not really fair for your partner to, like, keep stringing her along if, if what she wants is more time and affection. And it's also really awkward for her to pull you into that. Like, no wonder you feel attacked from both sides. I, I would be really hesitant around, like, a metamor who was just willing to lay all this all out on me. Because it's not really up to me. It's not my fault. And I understand why she's blaming you. It's easier for her to blame you. Because she doesn't have any feelings for you. She has feelings for this guy. So her brain is going to want to put all the negative stuff onto the person that she doesn't have any contact for. But that's still really, really worrying. If, if you confronted him and he said, I shouldn't have hid it from you. Or acknowledged that even if he wasn't trying to hide it, he didn't tell you about it. I just feel like he should have been a... It doesn't sound like he was apologetic about the situation. He just sort of was like, well, you're my primary and I'm only interested in her sexually. Okay, but clearly there's an issue here and you have to address that. And if that's all the way that he's going to address it, I just don't know if that's something that you should continue dealing with. It doesn't seem like you chose to have an open relationship. It just seems like you kind of fell into it. You don't really seem like a person who is like, yes, I want an open relationship. This is specifically what I want. It just seems like you didn't want to make a serious commitment either way and you saw other people and then you had this I love yous and confirm you're in a relationship, but it, it's not really clear about whether that was supposed to be open or not. I mean, what did he tell you when he was going once a week? Did he lie? I just feel like you need to ask yourself, do you want an open relationship? Is that what you want, independent of this person? Is it something you're actually seeking? And then if it is something you're actually seeking, do you want it with someone who is being dishonest with you? Because that's kind of what this is. Sorry, but if if he's been seeing some other person for the last year, hasn't mentioned it, and has been seeing her for at least once a week, and she is angry with you because she wants more time with him, so clearly she doesn't understand that she isn't going to get that, it just doesn't spell very good things. He's not communicating well 
in that relationship clearly or is making a choice of a person who doesn't want an open relationship when he should you know it's just a lot I just feel like you need to really ask yourself if open relationships are what you want and if having an open relationship with this person is what you want because you know it doesn't seem like you're happy to find this out and it doesn't seem like he was gonna tell you so I just feel like you like this this to me would be defined as cheating again I'm not gonna tell you how to define it to yourself it would be cheating to me and I would be out of there personally basically to sum up lying by omission is still cheating in my opinion whether or not you want to identify that as cheating is up to you because you kind of had nebulous boundaries and definitions from the beginning so maybe he did get confused and didn't know when to tell you and I don't know I think that you can confront him about the conversation you had it doesn't make it clear whether you actually told him that that she said that she wants more time from him and feels you're the blame for not getting that so clearly there's some communication breakdown it'd be interesting to see what he has to say about that and is he apologetic for basically hiding this from you for so long? Especially if he's seen her once a week. Like, he had to be, he had to say he was going somewhere. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe you don't live together. Or you don't have a shared calendar. So it's not like you paid that much attention. But sometimes we don't know that we have a boundary until it's been crossed. And this might be a situation where you go, okay, in the future, if you decide to see someone regularly, I would just like a heads up. And you can go from there. But I kind of just feel like the combination of the fact that you found it out, which to me seems to illustrate that he didn't tell you, you found it out on top of the fact that she is blaming you for not getting more time with him when you didn't even know about her, is it doesn't spell good things. So you need to ask yourself if you want an open relationship and if you want an open relationship with this person because even if he needs an open relationship fine but he could have been honest about it from the beginning and he wasn't and so that is really the issue that I'm having with if you need an open relationship that is fine but that doesn't give you carte blanche to just lie to people and and not tell them whether you're not intentionally lying or you're hiding things uh, yeah it just doesn't spell good things to me really ask yourself is open relationship what you want what you need and even if it is is that something that you want with a person who has lied to you for the past year and hasn't from the looks of it apologized for that I wish that I had more like other things to be able to advise because if this is his response it's just going well you're my primary and I just want to see her sexually and that's it that's just not enough to go by and the fact that you've been trying to find advice about this for so long makes me feel like he hasn't given you any other reassurance or attempted to do so and that doesn't spell good in any kind of relationship so yeah I wish that I had better things to advise I really hate it sometimes when the only thing that I have to advise is like do you really want to be in this situation but yeah I hope that helps and good luck Thank you for listening to episode 66 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. If you want to be awesome, you can donate to our Patreon. Donating $5 or more a month with your n- means bleh, that your name with your permission will be read at the end of the podcast. If I can get my words out. This week's current patrons are Laura Boylan, Chris Albury jones Juke, Ellen Robinson, Nikki Jones, and James Wartell. If for whatever reason you can't become a patron because I understand that life happens and you don't always have the budget, that's fine. Another thing you can do for the podcast is log into iTunes, rate, and review it. That is super helpful to me. Getting ratings and reviews shows other people that this is something they should check out. So, and yeah, and it grows the audience. And the more audiences it is, the more patrons there are. And the more patrons are, that means maybe I can quit my day job. That would be amazing. I really would like to do this for my day job. So yeah, even a rating helps. If you don't want to write a review, that's fine. If you're like, oh, I can't be, I can't be arsed to write. That's fine. Just leave a, leave a preferably a five star review but you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you what to do with your life it's your life yeah if you have five minutes please do that okay I'm gonna stop rambling thanks for listening this week you'll get a new column next Friday and another podcast episode in a fortnight thank you again for listening
You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. Our music has been provided by Chris Albury-Jones at albury-jones.com. And our podcast art was made by Dom Young at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you again for listening.